So here we are again on County Live. Not long till the season starts. It's very exciting. Look how excited Chris is over there. <laughs> Couldn't be more excited. He's got his got his boxing gloves out. Um, but very uh, a very exciting interview this week with uh, Phil Jevons, who had a short but absolutely fascinating fascinating time at Stockport County, Chris. Yeah. Um... <laughs> It's another one of these, how do you define legend? I'm not going to say he's going down in the pantheon of time or whatever, but he's um, he's had, a, he's had a, a very major impact in a very short amount of time at Stockport County. Look at the comments that have gone online on social media from the from the teaser that we put out earlier in the week. Um, people love him. People really, really appreciate what he did at the club. And by the end of his one season here, they were, you know... <laughs> begging almost, maybe maybe begging is the wrong word, but there was a lot of pressure for him to do another season. Um, obviously, he got the job at Everton and that's where his heart was, so so fair play to him. But um, yeah, away he goes. Well, let's not hold things up. Let's play Chris's interview with Phil Jevons here. <laughs> Phil Jevons, welcome to Stockport County Life. Happy Friday evening, uh, as it is currently. How are you doing, sir? Very well, Chris. Thank you very much, and uh, thanks for having me. Um, I don't do much on my Fridays anyway, apart from look after the kids and um, prepare for me games usually uh, the next morning. But we haven't got a game uh, until uh, probably the twelfth, uh, so a week tomorrow. So uh, not doing much, mate, on a Friday. So I'm more than happy to do it. Yeah, me neither. I don't do anything. On it. I've no life now. Football's not. On. I don't have any life at the moment. But. Um, no, well, before we go down the county route, before we go down um, uh, all, all looking back and everything else, you talk about preparing for games at the moment. What, what are you doing at the moment? You're back at Everton. Yeah, so when I finished that Stockport, as I finished my career as a player, it was me last year, and I went straight into Everton, with a full-time coach with the under-9s. And since then, I've worked my way up, um, you know, through coaching badges and experience, and I'm now coaching the under-16s full-time. So. Wow. Our games on a Saturday morning now. What I've just got, I've got to ask: working at a Premier League club and such a well-established Premier League club such as Everton, what's it like at the under nines level? Like, how intense is that when the, when the kids are coming in? What's the what's, what's it like? Yeah. Well, the most intense thing about it is probably the the recruitment side because we've got, obviously got many other massive Premier League clubs on our doorstep, and. To, to get the boys through the door and, and over the line in terms of signing them is the biggest challenge. Once they're in, it's all about fun. Um, really making sure that they're, they're enjoying themselves in that in learning environment. There's no emphasis on results whatsoever. It's all about development. And um, we've got one of the both one we boast of one of the best uh, development pathways in the country, and if not Europe, it's. Um... It's an exciting time for Everton at the moment, isn't it? And obviously, I'm an outsider, but I look in and I think Carlo Ancelotti, James Rodriguez, yeah. uh, Richarlison, Decore, if I'm not mistaken. It's all of a sudden, it looks like something's coming together over there. Yeah. Um, well, since Mashiri came in, we've had a lot of money to spend. We haven't always spent it um, in the absolute best way, but we've, we've been building and building and building. And now we're getting big names in, um, you know, season ticket. Sales are through the roof. We're going to a new stadium. It is all looking rosy. Um, the, the you know the, the optimist in me says you know we're going to be challenging Europe and uh, top four and, and beyond. But obviously, realistically, it's going to be a process and it's going to take time. So uh, expectations need to be managed. I think uh, along this journey. Uh, and just just quickly on on the Everton front, Carlo Ancelotti. Do you get much face time with him? Have you worked with Carlo yet? I haven't worked with him, but uh, I think about the first week or so that he was in, he came down to the academy and you know met everybody individually and uh, spent time and, uh, and introduced himself. And we had a, sm a small amount of time with him, good chat, and uh, seems a really good guy. And you know, obviously, massive name in the, in the world of football, and we're all delighted to have him. Yeah, no monster name. Well. I kind of want to start the, the Stockport County conversation with Everton tonight because you, you mentioned it there. As soon as you, your career at County, your professional playing career ended, you, you went straight into the Everton role. And I remember it clearly at the time. I'm sure you will as well. There was a lot of fans saying, can we get one more season from Jeff? Or all these you know, performances, great game to goal ratio, which we'll speak about in a little bit. Um, you know, he's put so much in for the club. Can we get one more season? 
were you kind of tempted to do one more season or was your mind set? This is happening. I want to go to Everton. I've got this plan laid out. I was tempted and Ryan McKnight did his absolute best um, to keep me for another year, but I had committed to the job at Everton. And I think the reason why I did so well towards the second half of the season was because I knew it was going to be my last one. And I sort of um, just sort of played with freedom and, uh, and the, and the, the performances and the goals came. And in the end, I was like, you know, because I, I probably could have played another year, maybe two at a stretch, you know, would have been 35 or 36 in them two seasons. But I think looking back now, the job that I took is a fantastic job. I got in at the right time. I finished my playing career on a high. And then that was the next step then. And, and now I am where I am because, you know, I got the ball rolling when I did so. Uh, yeah, yeah, but yeah, I know what you're saying, and I think probably I could have played another season or two. Probably, yeah. I had to ask. I had to ask. <laughs> uh, you, you were obviously playing at County under Alan Lord, and County fans will will mainly know Alan Lord for for his work with the youth. You know, I know that there was a lot of younger players around when you were there, but if you go back even further with Lord, you know, the, the likes of Anthony Pilkington, Tommy Rowe, who we had on here the other week. You know, so many players kind of come through his school. What was it like for you as a more experienced player, as an older player, and not someone who's just breaking through to work with Lordy? Lordy was fantastic. I've got to say, he, the the work that he's done over the years for, for County has been absolutely tremendous. And I, I don't want to say an unsung hero because everybody who knows him at County thinks the world of him. And I didn't know him that well and knew who he was. But when I first went in, he was the he was the first person I spoke to. He's the first person I met. He introduced me to everybody else. He was on the coaching staff when I first went in, obviously, uh, when Ian Bogey left and Lordy took over. He, he lent on me a little bit, you know, for, for my experience in the dressing room. And um, I just t told him how it was and it maybe, you know, took him back a little bit sometimes with, with some of the things I'd say. But it was almost like, OK, well, let's work together. And I think the relationship with me and Lordy really went from strength to strength from there. Where I, I requested a few things from him in terms of, you know, where my role within the team. And sometimes I'd, I'd be a voice from the dressing room to him and then vice versa. He'd, he'd like leave things with me to, to say to the lads. And we bounced off each other and worked really, really well. And that's why, you know, I've got the utmost admiration for him because not all managers or coaches would listen to maybe somebody who's, who's at the ex experience and age that I was at maybe feel threatened but no he was he was so open and um we, we both had you know the, the team's best interests at heart I think and that was that was the real key. Did, how did you see yourself gelling with those young players? I mean I'm guessing when, when you say Lordy kind of lent on you a little bit he was encouraging you to, to pass on what you knew because I look back at some of your goal reels and some of those finishes they're just unbelievable Phil you shouldn't be even attempting some of those and they're going in and then you look at you look at other games where it's not so much about quality of the goal but just the fact that Geisley for example you, you know with the very last kick of the game you have to you've got to keep that level head in front of the cheetah and yeah. to stick the ball in the back of the net and take the point is that was that you and your worth to the team obviously there's the on-pitch ability no one's questioning but the other stuff the, the passing it on to the kids and, and bringing the next generation through yeah I think Without, it's weird, isn't it? Because when you got in touch with us, Chris, you said, uh, oh, it's a, um, a Stockport Legends thing. And I don't really see myself as a Stockport Legend because I was only there a year. You know, you, you've probably interviewed, you mentioned Tommy Rowe and there's other players that you've inter interviewed that were there for years and, you know, really contributed to the club's success in the past. I feel like I'm almost gate, gate crashing a little bit because I was only there a year. But the performances, as I say, we're down to experience the goals that I scored. I mean, the, the league that and the level that I was playing at, I found uh, more space than I normally would have, you know, in years gone by playing in higher leagues. And the goals that I scored were, were based on, you know, just years of technique and freedom of, of trying these things. And, you know, if, if it doesn't happen or if I don't score from this angle, it doesn't really matter because, you know, I'm finishing this year anyway. Yeah, yeah. So it was a little bit of that. Um, the guy, the goal against Geisley, the goals against Geisley, and, and the way that game finished, it was weird because I got really emotional after that penalty. You know that um, 
I think it's John Crichton who's doing the uh, the commentary. He said, "Look at his face," and like it it wasn't so much like anger. It was almost like I might not get this uh, moment ever again. You know, in my life that that this hat trick in front of like the crowd and to score a last minute equaliser as it was. Uh, yeah, I was, it was really emotional. That and uh, I think without being overly loud or you know um, overly dominant in the dressing room, I, I think my performances with a with a way of showing leadership and maybe passing expertise on in, in, in me in that way on the pitch yeah I think I, I do want to pick over some of those points I want to start with referring to yourself as a legend this is the legend series and I completely get where you're coming from and believe it or not you, you, you know you're not the first player to say that this this summer where you say I'm not sure if I should be in this category and I, I, I get that do you know what I mean there's there's players who played for seven or eight years and hundreds and hundreds of games and everything else but when I look at players like yourself who had such an impact in such a short amount of time. When I think of my own experience as a county fan, when I was a young lad watching Kevin Francis, Alan Armstrong, Brett Angel, all these guys come through the ranks and score the goals. I looked up to those guys because they were scoring the goals. They were the heroes that, that, that got me into the game. Yeah. Think, of the, think of the young generation that were there, even just for that one year. Ten years later, they're still going to be talking about Phil Jevons, and you you remember that goal against Geisler, you remember you know this this goal against whoever, and you think that's that's what football is about, isn't it, man? That's that's why we follow the game. But uh, I want to talk about your goal to game ratio because we just had a brief chat about this off air. The decade, the the teens. Do we say the teens? I'm not sure, but you're the fifth highest goal scorer. You're in the top five goal scorer for Stockport County in in that time. Twenty one goals. In 43 games, you're up there with the likes of Christian Dennis, Matty Warburton, Danny Lloyd, Jason Oswell. That's some company and some achievement for a guy in his last season. Yeah, it was. Um, I, you know, I, I, ju I just so happy that that happened, that, that I finished on a high. Um, as I say, just years of working at me finishing, um, working at me game and, and trying to become a perfectionist in a way, you know, I was never the, the the tallest, so I was never a target man. Never the quickest, so never really played on the shoulder. So I had to adapt my game, and I knew that I couldn't sort of manipulate my own opportunities. I had to sort of rely on others, and then when I did get an opportunity, I had to make sure that I finished it. So because I might only get one chance every two or three games, um, so just working on that stuff every single day in training throughout my career, so that when that ball did drop to me in that season, I, I usually. You know, scored and or put it away, and it was it was great because I was coaching younger age groups then on a part time basis, and there was a couple of boys that are from that area and had come in and say I was at the game and I seen your goals, and yeah, it's great to be able to um, to maybe make some young boys happy or girls or you know even older people who go to the game. Um, I remember getting a bit of stick actually. At, the very start of that season off a couple of fans on Twitter because I didn't start the season that well. Ian Boggy was playing me in a position I didn't feel I was at my best in, uh, a lone striker in a, a sort of three at the back, which didn't work. We spoke to him. He didn't want to hear it. it. You know, he'd had success with that in the past, what Gates said. Um, and I, I wasn't playing well. I'd, I'd gone a few games without scoring and I was getting a bit of stick. So it was nice to t maybe turn that round a little bit and not so much, you know, prove people wrong but maybe win people over would be the, the better way of putting it I've seen in some in some older interviews that you, you were name dropping in, in particular Jamie Milligan you'd known him for a long time it was good to be playing with Jamie do you still do you still stay in touch with Jamie or, or any of the other lads that were there then yeah I, I've known Jamie since since we were 14 I think um, so when he actually set up for, for County I was delighted because I know he knows my game and there's a couple of times where he hasn't even looked and he's just this and I've gone because we're on that same wavelength. So, no, um, good players uh, that season, you know, uh, Tunji Moses, people people like um, Christian Dennis, you know, the, the loan signings that we had in. Um, Restart moved on, who, who done really well toward, you know, at the start of the season. And uh, it, it was a really good day. It was a really good time. I really enjoyed that season. Really did. Do you, do you still speak to to, to uh, Jamie Milligan? How's he doing these days? Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, well, <laughs> that, that, group that we had when we were at Everton, when we were, we won the Youth Cup uh, in '98, we've got a WhatsApp group called the Class of '98. You know, not not the Class of '92. <laughs> <laughs> but 
But uh, we have some good fun and we've had some nights out and we keep in touch, yeah. Yeah, we do keep in touch. It's good. How how did it feel when you when you first started hearing that Stockport County might be making a move for you? You go back all those years and you know, you're a guy who's been in football for a long time. You know, you've experienced moving clubs and you know everything else. You know that you're probably possibly coming to the end of the playing side of the career. But Stockport County are on the phone. What what was that kind of experience like? It was brilliant. Um not only because you worry sometimes when you're out of contract, you know, where you where your next club's gonna be. Uh, I'd had a decent enough season in the conference, you know, uh, the national the national league with Hyde the season before. And when I got a phone call to say that Stockport County were interested, I was like, okay, let's go, you know, straight away. Um my only regret really would be that um I didn't play for Stockport County earlier in my career, you know, when they were doing really well, League Two, League One. Um I would have been able to live ho- at home, um, and and I, I think if that if I would have signed for County back in them earlier years, I would have probably been there for the rest of my career because I enjoyed it that much when I did go there. That I think it would have been um, for, for a lot longer if I'd have gone there earlier. I know it's I know it's an easy thing to say, especially when you're on a Stockport County show, and I'm asking you. But a lot of the players they speak about the fan base, the fact that it's so passionate, and the fact that it's so kind of um, welcoming but at the same time as you mentioned there they, they can get on you a little bit if things aren't working out it's not the biggest fan base in the world i'm sure it's not the biggest fan base you've played in front of but it's it, there's something about it there's a hook there there's a passion there that you don't really see everywhere no it's it's unique isn't it you know and and the, i think the way there's the passion that they have for the club the fans um and the fact that they've been in higher leagues and they deserve to be in higher leagues there's a there's an element of frustration there and the demand the, they demand more. They dem- demand to be entertained. They de- demand to get results. And the fact that you know there's massive investment now, and you've had a promotion. Um, hopefully, the glory days are coming back, and uh, and people will be a lot happier. Um, because there was no way le- uh, that Stockport County should have been in the Conference North. You know, hopefully, then that that they're all in the past now, and onwards and upwards. But yeah. Um, a, a, an, a, an intense atmosphere, uh, fantastic uh, crowds for home games. I used to love uh, waking up on a Saturday morning with that buzz in your belly, you know, having your breakfast, uh, driving along the 62 to, to, to the game, music on, pulling up at the stadium, you know, feeling anxious and nervous, but, you know, captain at the time, playing well uh, and coming out, you know, onto the pitch with, with all the fans it, and scoring and playing well. It was It was amazing. Absolutely. Yeah. Who who were the other characters in the dressing room? Who do you remember as the Joker or the whatever? Who who were the personalities in there? Um, well, Charnock was funny. He he was funny on the night out. Um, <laughs> Jamie Milligan's always messing around. He is just he's like a, he's like a little wasp. He just never stops. But and there was loads of good lads. You know, Tunji as as I mentioned, uh, Tony. Um, we we had some we had some good we had some good lads in the dressing room. We had some fun. Oh, Polly. Listen, um, Phil, before we let you go, you, you kind of touched on it there. So uh, I, I don't want you to kind of have to go over and repeat yourself, but you mentioned that it looks like County are on the up now. From from the outside looking looking at County, do you get the impression that they're on the way back, like like you say, with the promotion, the investment, everything else? Does does it feel like something's coming? It does. It feels like something's coming. There's no getting away from it in football that, that there needs to be a financial back in there to attract best, better players, to pay better wages, to then increase performance. Performance, you know, hopefully breeds results. Results get you up the league and, and get you promoted. So there's no getting away from it. Um, the fan base is there, uh, I hope, and, and I look after county's results, obviously, uh, as I do my other previous clubs that I've played for. And uh, it does feel like there's something in the offing with, um, with um with Stockport and so unlucky to miss out last season. Points per game. Let's not go there. It's horrible. <laughs> uh, listen, Phil, it's been an absolute treat. All the best with Everton. And uh, yeah, we look forward to seeing you again soon. Hopefully get you down to a game in the near future when the doors are open again. That'd be nice, Chris. Well, thanks for having me. Cheers, mate. Cheers. So, Chris, Jevo. Jevo Jevo's the man. As you say, very short, but one of the one of those things where kind of everything happened. You know, a, a kind of slow start. It was like, you know, what are we getting from this fella? And by the end of the season, all started to click. 
knew what you were getting. Everybody wanted him to stay. And as he said there, he, you know, things being differently, he could have stayed for another year and, and another couple of years. So, so all really interesting stuff. Yeah, it's um, <clears throat> it's one that it's a, it's a tale that fans and players at this football club have experienced in the past and at probably every single other club in the in, in the country. Um, you know, player comes in with high expectations, doesn't hit the ground running straight away. Fans start getting on his back a little bit, and then he turns out, you know, to be everything and more that they were looking for. Matty Warburton said similar things a few weeks ago when in his, in his first game he missed a penalty, shanked a shot, and um, whatever else away at Spenny Moore, and the fans are getting on him a little bit. And then look at Matty now, you know, he's, he's a hero. Here. I think similar, similar style of vision, if you like, um, at Jevo, because Phil was saying, you know, when, when he first came in and you know, Ian Bogie's there and he's not really playing the role that he wants to play. He's not really in the position that he wants to be in. Alan Lord's come in. And do you know, Lordy is a, is a is a guy famed, as we had him on the other week. He's famed for working with the youth and bringing the youth players through. Yet here he is, squeezing the absolute best and the best that Jevo himself said he'd seen for a long time in his own career. Um, squeezing the absolute best out of a guy who's been right at the top level all the way down. Um Hell of a player, really good guy. And um, it was a place to speak to him as well. Do you know, he was just a nice, he just knew the game and he was a good guy. Yeah, like, um, I think that's probably, you know, a tribute to you that most of the interviews that we've had have been, you know, there have been a few exceptions, but... Uh, <laughs> I'm but, not a nice guy. <laughs> that's that's generally, generally the case. And obviously you talk about one big name in there. He talked about Carlo Ancelotti, which is yeah. uh, very interesting in the con context of the... The football season, the Premier League season, that's about to kick off? Well, I mean, he's working now. Like you said, he, he doesn't directly work with him every day, but those football conversations have happened. And you, you're you talking about a manager that's probably, what, in the top five in the world? Definitely in the top ten. Um, you know, this guy could walk into and has walked into some of the biggest jobs in world football. He's um, the, one of the highest respected managers in the game, Carlo Ancelotti. Uh, and Everton look well placed at the moment to have a really strong season. So Phil Jevons is in a is in a great position to to not just teach. You know he's working with the under sixteens, and you know whether Everton can bring through any youth there or not, I don't know. But he's also in a great place to learn because from a coaching angle, he's still quite young. You know he may stay at Everton his whole career, and fair play to him if he does. That's a good career. But you know working with the likes of Ancelotti, and obviously he's had Allardyce before him, and, and whoever else, Roberto Martinez. He'll have learned so much from these guys. Um, and you get the impression that he's that kind of character. He just lives and breathes football, loves it. And, um, yeah, I think <clears throat> if he can take that on into the wide world, and who knows, he, he's an asset to any football club. Maybe we'll speak about him in a county uh, respect in the future. Yeah, some of the top managers in the world and Sam Allardyce. Um <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and, yeah, and, and Chilotti, I, you know, I can't believe, to be, to be honest, I can't believe he's at Everton, that he is a fantastic manager for them. Um, unbelievable level of manager and absolutely brilliant. And, you know, Klopp loves him. Klopp really, really respects him. They've got a lot of time for each other. I can't believe that United and Arsenal were not really high in the conversation when he was available. You know, for United, like they could have Solskjaer as his number two for three years. And then take over. You know, imagine that scenario for them. I, I just don't get that. Why he was, you know, why not to, you know, to play down Everton, but why he, why he isn't at a bit at a bigger club. But there you go. That's, that's Carlo Ancelotti, and that's uh, his book is fascinating. You know, I've read Ancelotti's autobiography. I actually got a signed copy of it. He's um, he's a really good guy. And just uh, some of those. Te I mean, how many people in world football can bring out an autobiography and have? Um, excerpts in there from Zlatan Ibrahimovic, from David Beckham, from, you know, these kind of players. It's unbelievable. Uh, yeah. Who knows, maybe in the next sort of biography that comes out, Phil Jevons will put a piece in for him. Yeah, well, you never know. Um, but also in, in news of the big news of the week, season fixtures are out, starting at Torquay United. Uh, as we used to say, we used to say a few years ago, um, you know, get those long... You remember when it was um, Blythe Spartan's first day of the season and it was like, get these long trips out of the way, that's really good. Um, you know, we're different, different kind of club now and much bigger squad and, 
you know but still you know a long trip on the first day is uh, it's still a bit of a still a bit of an ask so good to get that out of the way <laughs> and good to, good to play one of the top clubs in the, in the league yeah um obviously fond memories of the last trip to Torquay. um county seeing them um, free scoring in that game um Devante rodney uh, in particular i remember opening his account um and i think county will look at that and like you say Football, it's crazy because football, even though we're on the verge of the Premier League kicking back off and we're a few weeks away from the the, the, the from, from county kicking off, which is obviously the talking point for us, it's still, the football is still almost secondary <laughs> in the conversation with regards to what's going on. So I like the fact that it's Torquay first because Torquay are an established club. With all due respect to some of the other clubs in this division, we could be going somewhere maybe less organised, smaller, um, not really. Just don't have just don't have the history of handling themselves in the, in uh, the higher like division. Salford or somewhere. <laughs> your your words, not mine. Um, I think um, yeah. So I, from that respect, I'm happy. And it's crazy that we're talking about it in in that way when it, we should be saying, like you say, the logistics of the football inside. Yeah, it's good to get one of the you know the long trips this season. There is a lot of miles. I would hazard a guess that this season we will be travelling more miles than we have done probably any other season in the last 20, 30 years. There is a lot, a lot of distance to cover this season. Um, it's not made any easier by the fact that with the seasons being pushed around. There's going to be, I think, did I see it right? That there's 12 overnight fixtures or 12, sorry, 12 Tuesday night fixtures. Yeah, that's what which, I read. Um, <laughs> which, you, you know, it's going to be so hard for people to to justify trips to, you know, Bromley or, or, or whoever, you know, on a Tuesday night, Barnet. So the fact that we've got good established, you know, let's get the ball rolling properly that hopefully sets a precedent that this is how the the bigger clubs, if you like, do it, and then the smaller clubs that maybe aren't used to it, they can they can see that and they can learn from it. And that's how that's how the the benchmark, if you like, are, you know the, the the setters of the standards, if you like, in this division should be the, should be the Stockport Counties, the Torquays, the Hartlepools, Chesterfields, Wrexham. You know the clubs that have, have been there and done it. Notts County, another one, massive club um, for this level. So I'm glad that it's that. Um, I'm glad that it's a strong team to turn the focus back to football because this is going to be it's almost going to be Jim Gannon's new look Stockport County in their first real test we've had some good friendlies um, but come on ultimately they're, they're friendlies and you, you have wholesale changes at half time and then a few more 15 minutes later um, so the fact that it's this is we're going to see his first 11 we're going to see him against a good strong test um, you know, Torquay, I'd be amazed if we're talking about them in the relegation zones at any point through the season. So um, it's it's a strong opening for Jim. It's a benchmark. It's a, I think it's probably what the squad need because, I mean, we've seen it with again with County and other teams in the past. Let's say if we get fodder, relegation fodder in the opening game and we smash them 5 6 7 nil, all of a sudden everyone's going patting themselves on the back saying, you know, here we go, job done. Uh, and then anything that doesn't replicate that moving forward, well, it's a bit of a damn squib. However, County now have a, a good test. We can still beat them. I, I, I fancy us to beat anybody this season. But expect that tough game. Expect a good test for the squad. Expect there to be little chinks. Don't expect it to be perfect straight away. There will be things that we need to work on. But a, a, a game like this will expose those and show us where we need to learn from them. I still think we have enough firepower, but at the same time, um, it's it's probably exactly what Jim Gannon would have won. A good trip that tests the mentality of the players because they're travelling all that way, but at the same time, the physical presence and his tactics in particular and his squad selection. Yeah, <clears throat> one thing, yeah, I'd caution, and, you know, personally, I'd be happy with a, a score draw um, it, because those players have never played together before. You know, okay, pre-season friendlies to get used to each other, but it takes time for that <laughs> to get in, especially when you you know you're eleven um, of the best players in the league. Which you know, let's make no bones about it. That's what County have done, gone out and got the best players. It takes time for that to kind of gel. So, 
So I think that's something that they, they'd have to watch out for. Um, another factor is talking, I've got a great manager in Gary Johnson. Um, read an interview with him this week, and he's uh, a couple of things to throw at you. He said, the thing is, nobody knows who the better teams are going to be. Stockport have laid out a lot of money for signings, and they've made no secret of the fact that they need to win the league. Do Stockport County need to win the league? Yes. I see what he's saying, and I know that he's trying to put the pressure on County by saying that. Do they need to need to win the league? Um, I think they do if the board's ambitions of championship in seven years are going to be met. Um, but, you know, if you were told now, would you take a playoff, you know, a player final spot? Well, yeah, of course you would, because you're in the player final. Um, however, from a footballing perspective, it doesn't work like that. You can't just say, if we don't win the league, the players and the management have failed because um, there's a whole wide range of factors. So the county need to win the league. Yes, they need to. Yes, they need to be in the. Yes, they need to go up. It's hard for me to say. Yes, they need. Yes, they need to be in the conversation. But no, they. What he's implying there, they need to run away with the league, and, and it's ours from from March or whatever. No, come on, no, don't. We know he's trying to play the game a bit there. Um, and one other thing he said is for Rooney to come out. So we're talking about John Rooney. Um, to come out of going into the league with Barrow and dropping down again, they must have showered him with presents. So, what are the presents, and can I can I have some of them? <laughs> He's just playing the game, isn't he? Um, yeah. sh- showering him with presents. I mean, dep- it depends what his definition of presents is. If you want to say you could be part of the squad and a, and a key part of the squad at that, that gets this massive club with a massive fan base back into the football league, you could be player of the season and be remembered and go on kids' shirts for years to come <clears throat> and have six, seven, eight thousand people in usual situations when Corona's gone. Six, seven, eight thousand, maybe even more, chanting your name week in, week out. You could have that. Then yeah, we are probably are showing him with with that because he's going to get more affection and, and more interest than he's probably ever had. With all due respect to Barrow County, a much bigger club than Barrow. Um, yeah, He's, 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 what the he's, he's, he's implying that um, we're paying him more money. We have no, we have no idea what these guys are getting paid. You know, if I'm a professional footballer, I want to play on the, I want to play in the best grounds, the, the best possible kind of quality of football that I can do. I want to learn as much as I can from the manager, uh, be amongst the best players that I can be. <clears throat> Let's be honest, we're not going playing in the Champions League or anything. It wasn't like we took him off Real Madrid. Or Barcelona, we've, we've taken him off Barrow in League Two. So, <laughs> what he's doing there is he's playing the game. He's playing the game, and yeah, John, John Rooney is is going to be loved there at County. He's he's a big name at a big club. So, yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's not, about, yeah. not about presence. The conversation was clearly: look, here are the teams in this league that you could be playing for, and this is you know this is their projection this is their trajectory which of the which team would you want to join which team has the most promise and that was clearly the conversation so let's, see what the biggest, let's see what the biggest gate is that barrow play in front of next season and let's see what the biggest gate stockport county play in front of next season and uh, and let's have that conversation again at the end of the season to be fair to gary johnson that's a interview in his local paper and you know that is the kind of as you say you know he wants to he's, he's responded he knows what he's talking about, so so fair play. Um, so lastly, um, we're recording this on Friday, friendly against Curzon Ashton tomorrow. Do you expect the starting 11 will be the starting 11 against Torquay? Possibly. Um, I tell you what, before we go down that route, it's going to be an interesting game because it's Paul Turnbull coming back to play against us. Um, you know, Bully has, has featured in most, if not all, of the, um, the pre season games so far. Um, so it'd be good you know, to see. It. Yeah, we, we we did the we did the um the, the big send off for him a few weeks ago, and then they showed up him and Sam at pre season, which was great. Um, but at the same time, a few county fans asking, "Well, does this mean they're going to be here <clears throat> at the start of the season?" 
obviously the answer is now no. Um, Sam's gone to Macclesfield, Paul's gone to Curzon. So, with all due respect to Curzon, I, I think he's probably a bit better than Curzon Ashton. But it's interesting that Alex Curran has gone there as well. So, I quite like that Curran is still going to be learning from, from Bully. I like that. So, um, yeah, interesting game for, for that reason on Saturday. Um, but yes, I would I would hazard a guess that um, the starting eleven is 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 probably going to be something close, if not the eleven that he's going to be looking at for Torquay. I'm not going to second guess the gaffer for clarity. We haven't spoken to him um, in a few weeks, <clears throat> so I don't know. I don't know um, if that's going to be proved right or wrong. But I would hazard a guess. The closer we get to the season kicking off, especially especially now we know who and he's going to know the styles of player he's going to need exactly in the first few weeks. Yeah, I think we're going to see those tactics come out. We're going to see less wholesale changes in the preseason friendlies as the as the as the big kickoff, if you like, gets closer. Great stuff. You've been listening to County Live. We'll see you next time. Finger guns.